Now, we're all special in this world. Our individuality is always what has made this world so beautiful. And it doesn't matter what we feel or look like. Oh, what the hell is that? Now, the Triassic was actually quite an experimental time for life on Earth. Now, there were certainly weirder times like the Cambrian, but it was reptiles in particular that got very experimental in the wake of the Permian mass extinction. So let's take a look at why, and then let's all point and laugh profusely at these animals for daring to be different. The first question to answer here is, why? Now, there are many ways to skin a cat. I'm joking, I'm joking. There are loads of different ways that an animal can glide from tree to tree or hunt for fish from a bank. And when plenty of niches are left empty, new ways of doing things will inevitably evolve by accident. And no time in Earth's history were there more empty niches left than in the wake of the Permian mass extinction, where just 2% of life remained. The first weirdo on this list is Cheroviptorix mirabilis. Found in 1965 and formally described in 1971, this reptile hailed from what is now Kaikaistan in Central Asia in the mid to late Triassic. Now were you formerly a leg man, but since getting a girlfriend you had to transition into a wingman? Well this is the fossil for you. And that is because it used those legs to glide. Membranes were attached to the very long legs and tail of this insectivore and possibly to the forelimbs to help control pitch. Now to be fair on the little guy, you only need to look at a delta wing and canard of a fighter jet to know that this is actually quite efficient. I don't, I don't think machine guns were attached though. As to the grouping of this archosaur though, we're not actually too sure, but a phylogenetic analysis conducted in 2019 found that this was possibly a tanistrophiid which makes this reptile even weirder. Speaking of which... Tanistrophids were a group of mostly marine reptiles, or at least semi-aquatic, characterised by long stiff necks. And when it comes to the group's namesake, Tanistrophius hydroidus, they don't get longer or stiffer. Just, just look at this guy. He made Diplodocus look like he was feeling chilly that day. The neck was actually longer than the body and the tail combined. In fact, its anatomy is so confusing that it was actually misinterpreted in 1886 as a really weird looking pterosaur. A Tanistrophius has actually been found in rock units from the mid to late Triassic all over the world. So we know it got around, but what kind of lifestyle did it actually lead? A neck like that surely can't be that practical on land and it didn't actually have the hind limbs that were evolved for a fully aquatic lifestyle. Well, paleontologists found that the neck was stabilised with strong tendons, making it less ungainly on land and the hind limbs were actually very muscular, being capable of short bursts of swimming, meaning Tanistrophius was likely a piscivorous ambush predator that didn't live in the water full time. Okay, now we're really getting into some Star Wars shit. Adipodentatus unicus was a basal sauropterygian from the early Triassic of China. Now this guy was actually very closely related to plesiosaurs, though obviously didn't last long. It is also, at the time of this video, the earliest known herbivorous marine reptile. And now for the aquatic elephant in the room. That colour's doing nothing for your eyes, honey. No, seriously, those gnashes. Originally, Cheng et al. interpreted this thing's mouth as having a vertical split at the front of the mouth that was lined with teeth, possibly for filter feeding small invertebrates. But as it turns out, the team either got drunk the night before, watched teeth, and then couldn't get that image out of their head, or the skull was badly damaged. We're told the latter. Either way, new specimens were reinterpreted and it turns out that Adabodentatus had a wide, flat, shovel-like face ideal for rooting up shallow seabeds for food. Ah, a handsome boy once again. Now 
Now this next entry is a bit of a cop out because it's a whole group, just because I really couldn't decide on just one. Say hello hello to the Alicotosaurs. These guys were global and hailed from the mid to late Triassic as well, being basal archosauromorphs with a name that literally translates to strange reptiles. Now there aren't actually that many known members of this group, but what they do have certainly leaves an impression. Such as the horny boy Shringosaurus, Captain Underbite Azendosaurus, Teratopetan, the beaky weirdo whose name literally means wonderful creeping thing, and of course the lizard that crawled out from my garden bush insisting that it wasn't taking pictures of me getting changed, Trilophosaurus. And what makes them even weirder is that they were herbivores but were named weird reptiles just because their herbivorous features were unlike any other. Life's so hard. I love lizards, but I also love beavers. <laughs> but my life has changed since the two were put together. Say hello to the Rhynchosaurs. More herbivorous archosauromorphs. These guys appeared possibly during the early Triassic and were the spiritual successors of Lystrosaurus and lasted up until the end of the Triassic. 23 species have been described from all over the world, meaning that these guys were hugely successful, likely due to those gnashes. Now it's been found that this group's jaws were very powerful and mixed with those strange teeth, there wasn't much vegetation that these beaver lizards couldn't munch through. Don't make beaver and bush jokes. It's too easy. The strangest genus, and the one with the most species, is Hyperodapodon. Just, just look at its face. Look at it. How the hell can something remind me of a bearded dragon, a hamster, and a tarantula all at the same time? Ryan, why the hell are Pseudosuchians on this list? What's weird about crocodiles? Well, even though this group does include modern crocodiles, the term Pseudosuchian actually means false crocodile. Not only did they lack quite a bit of foresight when naming this group, but they also saw that it had some really freaky crocs. Bipedal crocs? Postosuchus has got you covered. Grumpy croc with shoulder pads to challenge the 80s? Desmatosuchus has entered the building. How about a croc with a dinosaur head that can gallop towards you to bite your face off? Now, I've already spoken about this in my Triassic video, but these Pseudosuchians were extraordinarily successful and even put the dinosaurs in second place in terms of niche domination, with both apex predators and massive armoured herbivores. It took the end Triassic extinction event to take them down a peg, but if it weren't for that, the variety of body plans may have stopped the dinosaurs from dominating in later periods. Speaking of dinosaurs, The Avometatarsalia is a group that contains all archosaurs more closely related to birds than to crocodiles. In other words, this is the sister taxon to the previous lot, and its most famous members are dinosaurs and pterosaurs. Now you might be wondering why they're on this list, but just because we've gotten used to seeing them doesn't mean they're not strange when compared to other reptiles, especially when we see what they would become. Think about it. Reptiles that either extended their little fingers so that they could use it to fly or started walking around on its hind limbs only to leave its forelimbs to become tiny and useless. Hell, both these groups actually repurposed some of their body scales into fuzz that would later become feathers and decided that dancing was the best way to attract a mate. Now this is unlike any other group at the time or even most groups that came afterwards. Dinosaurs and pterosaurs are freaking weird. Now there are a lot of Triassic freakazoids that I've probably missed out, so if you do think of one, be sure to let me know down in the comments. There you'll also find another way to support this channel through a Patreon link where you can gain access to lots of cool benefits, including this channel's outtakes. So I'll see you over there for more laughs, and I'll see you here on YouTube next time.